Well, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to our uh, lunch session on Find. Uh, my name is Roger Stewart. I am a training communications manager with Realtor.com. And I'm here to kind of give you a quick introduction to uh, the new Find application that's now available to you inside of MSL, MLSLI. A little bit of a tongue twister. Uh, I'm going to start off real quick with a video. If I can get to it over here. I think you'll find this to be very familiar. Cindy, good to see you again. So how can I help you today? Well, the houses you showed us last... It's not plugged in. Evan. Cindy, good to see you again. So how can I help you today? Well, the houses you showed us last night were great. We're just trying to decide now between the two communities you've shown us which one we like better. Yeah, we really have two favorite houses that we'd want to put an offer in for. But one of our concerns is foreclosed homes. With foreclosures being in the news so much lately, can you get us a list within a five mile radius of any foreclosed homes that surround the two final homes we're looking at? I wouldn't have exact numbers, but I don't think they'd be very high. Let me call my friend who's a mortgage lender. I've been renting my out-of-state condo for the past few years now, but I think it's time to sell because I'm really enjoying this area. If I give you the address, can you do a search for and recommend a couple of realtors who have sold the most condos in that area recently? After I make a few phone calls and do a bit of research, I can find that out for you. Oh, I was hoping to find that answer out right away. Our family is selling my grandmother's house in Phoenix. I plan on using a portion of that sale for a down payment on one of the homes you've been showing me. I know it's not the area you work in, but I was wondering if you could give me an idea of what the home is worth or what you might think it would end up selling for. Well, you know, after a bit of investigating I can, it might take a few days. We've been reading that this is the worst housing market in recent memory. Can you compare our community to other communities across the country similar to ours and show us how their markets are doing? It could be a considerable indicator on what's going on here. I'll get you the answers just as soon as I can. So my grandmother's house has been advertised all over the internet. Now since consumers can look for homes on sites like Realtor.com, I was wondering if you could have information about a home in Phoenix through your MLS system? Well, I don't have access to MLS data for Phoenix. There are several sites on the internet where you can see estimated values. Too bad we don't know the specifics yet, otherwise I'd consider putting an offer in today. I agree. I would really feel a lot safer knowing the answers to our questions. Do you know what the housing market is in that area? I was thinking about... I was really wondering... Ooh, if the home was in... If I were to... If we were to... Who would be... Do you know? Do you know? I was curious. Do you have... If we were to... I was thinking about... If I were to... How about... Well, who would be able to... I was really wondering... As a professional, I should have access to the types of information my consumers are now asking me for. So has any of that ever happened to you? <laughs> well, one of the reasons that um, we created FINE was to help real estate professionals with some of those answers. Now we know that agents, uh, or not agents, uh, consumers are looking all over the internet, finding a lot of information that way. Uh, NAR did a study not too long ago and found that 97% of all buyers and sellers are going to do all their research on the internet before they ever even get to a realtor. So first of all, one of the first things we did was create realtor.com. And I'm going to come down here because I like talking down here to everybody and I can see that better. So at realtor.com we created this website to be able to provide a lot of this information to the consumers. And so we spent a lot of years developing this information, developing the pathways to get them there, and we've maintained that very high ranking within the internet community for quite a while. We've uh, worked very hard at creating a great consumer experience. And most importantly to us is creating that connection between the consumers and the realtors. Because obviously our business model is selling to the realtors. So if we don't have something that works well for the realtors out there, then obviously we don't do very well in business. So, we have a vested interest in making sure that realtors do well. If you're not successful, you're not going to continue to work with Realtor.com. So we have to build this, this model that brings in the consumers, provides the information that they need to make good decisions, 
and help them along with that research. So that's what we've done. But the whole goal is not necessarily creating a data port for consumers. It's bringing those consumers in and then connecting them once they have that information with the real estate industry and the professionals that can help them get their deals done. I'm sure everybody's pretty familiar with the Realtor.com website. Um, currently, we're uh, sitting on a, a property-centric database. Um, if you've probably heard that term, that's the latest kind of buzz phrase that's going around the industry is property-centric. Um, we're kind of on that bandwagon. The whole idea is just kind of centering everything around the property itself rather than an MLS listing specifically or other types of data. So we've currently set up a database that's got over, actually over 110 million property records currently. Uh, we have millions of active and sold records from 900 plus MLSs all over the country. But in addition to that, we've integrated all the extra data that the consumers are looking for. They want to know what the weather's like if they're moving to a new location. Uh, they like to know what the economy is like in some new locations because it varies quite a bit across the country. So if they're relocating or just relocating across town, they'd like to be able to research that data and they want access to it. So we have brought in uh, and integrated all types of local content. Uh, we'll see that here in just a few minutes. We've also developed all this on top of a very unique, very fast search engine. It uses what's called indexing. Now you've probably seen something very similar to that if you've ever heard of a little company called Google. Uh, they work at uh, usually giving a response to any type of search request within, I think uh, last I heard it was like a third of a second. They want to have that type of response all over the world. We're using the same type of technology that, that provides that information on a very quick, uh, quick level. You'll see that here in just a few moments also. So what we've learned over the years is the consumers are out there online, they're looking. They want to make sure that they can hit some place that's going to provide trusted information, up-to-date information. That's another kind of key aspect to the information they're looking for. And we know not all sites on the internet are keeping their information up-to-date. Um, the MLSs that provide data to Realtor.com are currently doing so. Uh, we're ref refreshing information from all the major MLSs at a rate of every 15 minutes. So we know our data is fresh. We know what we're getting. Uh, the only time that we don't have information refreshing from every, everywhere, every 15 minutes, is if the MLS doesn't have the capability of providing that type of refresh rate. Most of the majors do. So we're getting live data, or pretty darn close to it, on a regular basis. So we also want to make sure that they're not hitting any walls. I'm sure most of you have gone out to the internet, you find a site, you start finding the data you want, and all of a sudden you get that happy little pop-up page that says, we like your name, your email address, your phone number, uh, your firstborn, your social security number. All that type of information, we call it a squeeze page because we're trying to squeeze information out of the visitor. Most visitors, including myself, when I get those, will usually jump off to another page and go somewhere else because if I can find the data here, I can probably find it somewhere else as well. So we don't do that on Realtor.com either. Uh, we don't want them to hit walls. We want the consumer to have a good experience so they keep coming back and then when they're ready, we provide them the channels to get in touch with a real estate professional. Now one of the other benefits of Realtor.com over a lot of other sites that provide data out there is the attribution to the agents and the brokerages. There are all kinds of places you can go on the internet and find both active listings and sold data. Most often, however, the sold data comes from public records. Public records don't usually give attribution to both the selling agents and the buyer's agents. Realtor.com does. And so in addition to providing all that data to the client, we're hopefully also connecting that dot that says, to have successful deals, you're usually better off if you have a professional involved. And here are some of the professionals that provide that service. So that attribution, we feel, is a very important part of the service that's provided through Realtor.com to the consumer. So we've spent all this time and money creating this site that hopefully from a consumer standpoint, reliable, accurate, timely, detailed, actionable, gets them to do something, contact an agent when they're ready. And it's also very well trusted in the industry. In developing all this, we have this huge platform. And as I mentioned before, we have over 110 million property records currently. We have uh, over 4 million active listings from the MLSs, 2 million sold listings direct from MLSs in addition to the 5 million sold public records we currently have. To that, we can also add school reports, boundaries, community and demographic and neighborhood information. Uh, we have the ability to watch the search activity so we can constantly redevelop the site and make sure it's meeting the needs of the consumers and the way that they're searching for information. We also bring in several different sources of AVMs. And for those of you who are not familiar with the AVM term, it's an automated valuation model. If you're still not familiar with it, you might know it a little bit better as a Zillow Zestimate, everybody's favorite. It's another way of 
valuating property. There are a lot of different sources out there for AVMs. They all calculate them differently, and they all use different types of data sets to come to those AVMs. So some of them can be pretty different. We don't develop or, or create our own AVMs, but we have licensed several different providers of those AVMs. So when an, an agent goes in to find and does their property research, they can see probably at least two or three different AVMs that their consumer that's coming to them has probably already seen on the internet. It's not designed to say, here's what we think your property's worth, but to arm you with the information to be able to deal with that consumer when they come to, to you and say, I think my property's worth $500,000, and you know nothing is sold in that neighborhood over three for the past three or four years. So it's just more information that gives you the tools you need to be able to work with that consumer and get them set up to do the business they need to do. So that's the entire technology platform that was built originally for Realtor.com, and that's what it runs on. However, the Realtor.com experience is built to be kind of a guided tour, because as we bring those consumers in and we provide the information to them, you all know there's advertising built in there and there's information on agents and other services, and so we kind of guide them through the whole process of providing the information as well as marketing to them. We also know over time that a lot of agents have also used the Realtor.com tool to research properties maybe beyond the boundaries of their MLS because we have everybody's stuff. So what we've done over that time is developed a second website called Find, and that's what I'm kind of here to tell you about. So the Find application is kind of the agent's entrance. It's built on the exact same platform as Realtor.com. The data is exactly the same as what's provided to Realtor.com. However, there's a lot of information we do get from the MLSs that doesn't display on Realtor.com. It is available to agents, however, in the back end. Things, uh, for example, some of the public record information that comes in. It's still public record, but we usually don't display things like owner names and things like that out there directly to the consumer on Realtor.com. However, the agents have access to that information within Find. So the find application, as I mentioned, runs on the same data. We have Realtor.com on the consumer side. It's kind of their gateway to the data. And now we have find on the back side that's accessed directly through your MLS. And you get in there, and that gives you access to all the information that is available within the find database or within the Realtor.com database. So usually one of the questions that I get when I train this, and in my background, which I neglected to mention at the beginning, um, in addition to working for find, I've also been in the real estate industry for about 12 years. I was an active investor since about 2001. And most recently, I've been a trainer with Arizona Regional MLS up until July of this year when I came on board with Find. So I've had an opportunity to do a lot of training and working directly with agents and helping them kind of look at the tools that are out there, including all the tools that we have out there in the pavilion, and help them figure out how to make them work for their business and being successful within their business. That's one of the reasons I came over to find because I very much like this product. Now, the, the two main reasons that it's of value to you, that it's worth investing the time and figuring out how to use it, because that's usually the first response we get from agents when we add new stuff, is why do I need to waste my time learning something new? I've already got enough stuff on my plate. Well, one of the things that I happen to like about this product is it's very quick and easy to learn. It's got a very short learning curve because if you can type in, I'm looking for a home for sale in West Babylon, that's all you got to do. You don't, there's not a whole list of check boxes and different uh, pick lists and, and different ways of selecting things through search engine. It's just like typing it into Google. It automatically finds it for you and displays the results. Now, what we've developed, though, is not designed to take the place of what your MLS does, but it's designed to kind of enhance and extend the reach of what your MLS provides. That's the first thing that it does. Your MLS does a very good job of providing listing data and taking care of that data and making it available to all the agents that are members. However, because that is their focus, they don't get into a lot of other things pulling in data sets to find out what the average rainfall is for a given area or average commute times. Believe it or not, that is the number one consumer requested search criteria for Realtor.com. Consumers want to be able to go in and they want to say, I work at this address, find me every house within a 20 minute commute. And that's something we're working on. We're not quite there yet, but we have the commute data. So when you go in and pull community reports, you can see on those community reports what the average commute time is for a given area. We're working on getting that down to the property level so people can actually pull that information on a more targeted level and actually make it searchable. So it's things like that the consumers are looking for. And even if they're not finding it on Realtor.com, you'll be able to find it in Find eventually and be able to still provide that information to your clients. So it's 
the ability to extend that information beyond just what the MLS provides for your listings to do that property research on either a property that a seller has come to you and wants you to list or on a property that a buyer is looking for and they want background information. The other part of the puzzle is find also covers the entire United States. That's why we have over 110 million properties in the database, not just active listings and just recently sold listings. We have every property out there, just about every property, um, that has public record information is in here. So you can research just about any address in the entire country. So usually the next question is, why do I care who's buying or selling homes in Portland, Oregon? Well, one of the reasons is perhaps you get that client that wants to relocate to Portland. Currently, if you're not using other means, basically you've got to sell their house here and wish them good luck. With Fine, though, you can kind of add that extra layer of service, which in a highly competitive market we're in, anything you can do to kind of help that client along is going to be beneficial. So within Find, you can actually begin that search for them. Take a look at what's available in Portland. Find some properties. Redirect them maybe to Realtor.com because, again, if you give them the parameters for the search or vice versa, you're looking at the same property databases. So they'll see the same information that you're trying to provide to them. Or you can just do it through the reports within Find, whichever you prefer. The added benefit, though, is not only can you go look and see what's available in Portland, you can go into Portland and find out who the performers are. You can run a search on Portland, find out who the top agents are that have listings, who the top agents have sold the most homes in any market anywhere in the country. Once you find those performers, all it is, takes is a phone call. I have a client that would like to relocate to Portland, Oregon. Can you please help them find a home and maybe work out a nice little referral bonus in the process? It's a win-win for everybody. You've been able to provide extra layer of service to your client. Hopefully, they're going to tell their friends and family about it. The client doesn't have to walk into a market cold and find an agent out of the blue. And you can provide them a qualified lead to the agent on the other end that probably wouldn't have seen that client any other way. So it gives you that benefit to set that up. And hopefully, if you can make some money on top of it all, it's not a bad deal for everybody. And if you're talking to the real performers on the other end, they're doing deals. They're probably not hurting a whole lot for money, so they're probably not going to balk a whole lot at a referral bonus because they understand what a qualified lead is worth. So that's just something to keep in mind. So those are a couple of the main benefits for having the tool. We have all the listed properties. It's fast search. It's all part of Realtor.com. Got a whole bunch of testimonials that I'll kind of skip past. We actually use this for our training. We're currently training at MLSLI right now. And the links for Find just went active Monday. Woo! So, it's already there waiting for you. There's no extra usernames you need to know. There's no passwords you need to know. As soon as you log into Stratus, the find icon is right there. All you have to do is find it. Uh -huh. I'll wait for just a second for it to pop up here. So this is a quick look here at find. And the first page that pops up is going to be the main search page. And as you can see, we currently have 110,378,857 properties exactly. <sighs> Starting off at the top of the page, when you first log in, the first thing that's going to actually happen when you go in for the very first time is you're going to get a profile pop-up page. It's going to ask for your specific information, name, phone number, address. If you'd like to upload your photo and your company logo, all those things will, uh, will give you the opportunity to do. And as you do that, it's, uh, the information you provide is all up to you on how you want it to display and how you want it provided to the system. You can put your designations in, languages you speak, everything. And what that's going to do is that's the information that will display anytime you run reports for clients and send those reports out. That's pretty much all it's, it's controlling. As for the find page, it's very simple. There's really only four tabs for the whole system and probably 99% or 95% of your time is going to be spent right here on the search tab. Search tab is where everything is run from and when you want to run property searches, that's really the only box you have to worry about. That's your Google search box. It's pretty simple. Now when you first get in here, if you'd like to, uh, I know the, uh, the folks over at uh, MLSLI are putting together classes. Um, I've got another class to teach them all about find again tomorrow but they're going to be putting together some additional classes and, and training for everyone. So if you'd like to come in for that, that'll be coming up available and they'll be notifying you of when those, uh, when those are happening. But if you're the type that likes to get in there and poke around and start figuring out how things work, it's not too difficult. Uh, a 
couple places you can go for information on your own. First of all, the Answer Center, which is that fourth tab right there, will take you over to the Answer Center page. And this is actually a really good place to start. There's a six minute video, because we all know we all hate to read. Movies are much more fun. So we have a video that will actually take you through an overview of the whole system, give you a basic step-by-step -step of some of the basic functionality. In addition to that, it is an ongoing, growing system. And so about every six to eight weeks, there's going to be some new updates and changes. Most of them have been requested by agents. So we have right beneath that big video a section called What's New? So when anything ever changes within the system, the information will be provided here, usually a couple of days ahead of time. So you'll know when new changes are coming up and some of the new functionality is going to be available. Uh, one of the things that we've had a lot of requests for is some updates and adding mapping to the reports. So that's something that's actually going to be coming out probably about the first part of November. We have a November release that's going to add mapping and maps to the actual reports themselves, as well as the ability for an agent to print off a report that shows if they run, let's say, 10 properties into the report bin, they can actually do a printout with a map with all 10 properties on it. So that's some extra functionality. All that came in through agent feedback. And when we get back over to the search page, I'll show you where to do that as well. We absolutely want to hear from everybody. So if you have suggestions as you're using this, um, something's not working the way you think it should, you really like something the way it's working, uh, you'd like to see changes, additions, whatever the case may be, make sure you let us know about it. We'll be happy to, to process that and, and put it in the queue and see about getting it changed or updated for you. So that's the first place to go. At the very top of the page, there's also a link that says uh, continue on to the Find Support website. This actually pops up another page. On the Find Support website, there is information on everything in Find. So if you're one of those self-teachers, it's a great place to go. We have an online user guide. We actually used to use this for the Train the Trainer classes, and we turn it into a regular user guide that's very easy to use. When you click on it, it's going to take a couple seconds because of wireless. Um, but it's a, a PDF that's clickable. And so you go through the uh, table of contents. Any topic that you want to find information on, you simply click on the topic, jumps right to it. You don't have to go searching for it. When you're done reading that topic, the very top of the section is a section header that has the title of what you're looking at. Click on the header, it takes you right back to the previous information. I'm going to jump back over here while it's finding that. We also have Quick reference guides, also in PDF form. So they're also going to take a while to download. But the quick reference guides, you can also either download or, or access online. Those are like five pages of quick bullet points to get you up and running quickly. Go here, click here, A, B, C, D, done. So there's some quick resources available, plus every single area has its own area. There's articles on it. And once again, we have lots and lots of videos. So if you don't want to read, you can watch the little short three to five minute videos on each section. Every time you click on one of those, it does open a separate screen. So you can watch the video, learn about it, go right back to work. It's not going to jump you out to a different web page. So you can actually go back and forth to the different pages. Here's our online user guide. It's loaded now. And so if, we're, if I'm in here, it's as simple as I'd like to find out um, how to manage my saved searches. I just click on it, and it takes me right to that part of the guide. I can read through it. It's got lots of pictures. There's links in here. If it talks about a link to another part of the guide, those links are all active. It's very easy to jump around and get to where you need to go. And when you're done, just click back on the header, and it takes you right back to the table of contents. If you really, really want to, you can download these. They are in PDF form. But we don't recommend that only because we're updating the system. And every time we do, these get updated as well. And if you download a copy and don't update it yourself very often, it's going to be outdated within probably six months or so. So that's the Find Support site. Lots of different training opportunities there. And last but not least, when we get back over to the search page, if you still can't find what you need, you need some extra support, in the upper right hand corner there is the contact support site. And that will hook you up with the folks here at MLSLI and they'll get you up and running. That feedback that I was talking about, that appears down here in the lower right corner of the page. So if you have questions, if you have some additional information you'd like to, us to know about, then just click that feedback button. It's going to give you a little pop-up with a comments box. Let us know what you think, good or bad. There is also in that little pop-up going to be an email address. It is completely optional, but if you do want a response or you want an answer back from somebody, make sure you put your email address in so we can find you. Because we don't track, we want to give people the ability to be anonymous if they choose, so we don't track by your login who's necessarily sending feedback. Question? Do you need a username or password for that? Uh, do we need a username or password? The answer is no. 
when you log in, well, you do need it to get into Stratus. But again, once you're in Stratus and you're logged into Stratus, you just click the find link right here. There are no usernames or passwords to remember. It's all, you're all authenticated through the MLS. So let's talk about how easy it is to actually do a search, since that is kind of the whole point. Right up here in the upper left is the search box. And you'll notice as soon as I place my cursor in that box, I get a drop down that gives me some examples of ways to word things, as well as some power shortcuts below. Now, the official name for what it does is called a natural language parser, which basically means you tell it in natural language what you want, and it figures it out. Now, every now and then, there are some words that it has some trouble figuring out because it tries to find things in kind of a, a specific order. So it usually looks for the main things that we search on, like city and state. Um, those will be the top items. If you put numbers in, it assumes that's a price. So there are specific times where you want to make sure that it understands what you're looking for. For example, if I were looking for marble floors, well, there's also several cities in the country named marble. So if I just put in marble, it's going to assume that I'm talking about a city, and whatever city I already have in, it's going to switch over. So we have these power shortcuts down here at the bottom. And so for keywords, it's just K colon. So for example, if I just want to find some properties here in Woodbury, I just simply type in homes for sale in Woodbury, New York. And I hit enter. And you'll see it automatically, what did I do wrong? <laughs> four, I misspelled four. All the years in IT and training, I never learned to type. There we go. So you'll notice it uh, automatically parses out the city property type, because I told it I wanted homes. It automatically knows that's detached homes. So if you are looking for multi-units, you have to put in that you're looking for multi-units or condos or whatever the property type. Or if you don't put any property type in, it's going to give you everything. Since I said I was looking for homes for sale, it gives me active listings. If I wanted to change that to a different status, all I have to do is click on the box, and it gives me a drop down to select from. So I can switch this over to recently sold. And it's going to rerun it and pull up the 15 properties that have recently sold. Now, just like Realtor.com, find considers recently sold as sold within the last six months. Anything that's not active or sold within the last six months is just considered an off-market status. We still have all the property information on it, but it's not going to be marked as either a recently sold or an active property. In addition to being able to just simply type things in, we have a couple of other buttons off to the right. So if I wanted to go back to my mistype or go back to uh, the, the last search that I ran, which was for actives, we have a previous search button. So I just kind of click that. That's kind of a built-in back button. Now, much like probably your MLS software, don't use the back button built into the browsers. When you do that, that automatically refreshes everything and will take you back to the screen and kind of etch a sketch all your other search terms. I know I'm kind of dating myself on the etch a sketch thing. So the first thing I did is I went ahead and just threw in, I was looking for homes for sale in Wood, uh, Woodbury, New York. Now, if I'd like to add bedrooms and bathrooms to that, I just simply say, let's say I'm looking for three or more bedrooms. So I put in three plus beds and two or more baths. So I'll put in two plus baths. The system will recognize bedrooms, beds, or BD, or bathrooms, baths, or BA. So it depends on how short and sweet you want to be. So you'll see it automatically puts in there two plus. I'm still looking at 84 properties because pretty much all of them are three or more bedrooms. If I want to change that to a range, I can simply click on that particular box. And because I have a different type of criteria that I'm putting in, instead of having a pick list like we saw before, now I have little sliders. So if I wanted to change that to maybe three to five bedrooms, I can grab that little slider and drag it down to five, click OK, and now the range inside that box will say three to five. If I wanted to, I could have just put in three to five to start with when I typed in my three plus. You can just type in three if you only want three. 3 plus if you want 3 or more, or 3 to 5 if you're looking for a range of 3 to 5. So it understands a lot of different ways of being able to put the data in. So you don't have to learn it, it already has. Now, some of the other neat little features that are built into this, it also understands that we call different things in different areas. So for example, if I wanted to find a property with a deck, I'm going to put in my K colon, because deck is actually a city somewhere else, and I'm just going to put in a deck. When I do that, it automatically recognizes the word deck as a keyword, puts it into the keyword section. And usually the keywords, it's looking for things that are going to appear in the remarks fields. 
And notice, when it updated the 33 properties, it also added a line of text for every one of the properties. And in that line of text, it's displaying where it found that word. So you can see the context that it's coming up in. So for example, on the first one, let's see, we have here, there's a pool, a deck, uh, exterior features, we have a deck there. If I scroll down a little bit, there's some other decks. Let's see if I have the one I'm looking for. Level decks and ground sprinklers. Okay, here's a good one. So on this one here, notice it has, uh, with his and her bathrooms and access to second floor balcony, overlooks yard. There's no deck. However, we also know that in some areas, decks are referred to as balconies. They're also referred to as patios, porches. So it's gonna return anything that has the word deck, patio, porch, balcony, or if you happen to be researching condos in Hawaii, anything with the word lanai. So the system understands that different areas call things different names. So you may be looking for a property in Phoenix. If you put the word deck in, I can tell you most agents don't use the word deck out in Phoenix because we don't really have them. Um, we have porches and patios. But the use is pretty much the same. So the design is really to give you all the results and let you kind of filter through and decide what you don't want. So we don't decide anything that's, that's you know, did they mean this, did they mean that? We're gonna give you all the results. So that's the quick and easy way, or one of the quick and easy ways to go through and add information. Now, in addition to being able to type it in up above, down the left-hand side, we have a section called the results breakdown. So currently, of these 33 results, I can see how many are three, four, and five bedroom. It does a price breakdown and tells me how many properties fall into those price categories. Same thing for bathrooms and several other categories. Now, there's a total of six panels that display there all the time. And you can only have a maximum number of six, but there's a lot more to choose from. So if I wanted to get rid of the price ranges and find maybe square footage, then I would simply hover over that particular uh, module. And when I'm hovering over it, I get a little red X, which allows me to delete it. Unless you're hovering over it, though, the little red X doesn't show up. So as soon as I do that, I'm going to get rid of the prices. And now I have a click to add more. When I select that, it gives me the full dropdown of all the different types of information that I can go in and pull. So if I want square footage, I can do that. Your MLS doesn't post square footage, so that's not going to be a good one for me to demonstrate. Uh, but I can also pull in, for example, lot size. So if they're interested in lot size information, it takes all that information and breaks out and tells me what categories of lot sizes they go into. And what it's going to do is it's going to take the total number of results and kind of evenly break them out into different ranges. Every one of those is also a clickable item that will immediately become part of my search criteria. So as I'm going through this, if I realize, well, I've got 10 that are four bedrooms, and my client would really prefer a four bedroom if they can get it, I can just click on that rather than having to type it in, and it's automatically going to update all of my search criteria above and take me to those 10 properties. So I can put in sizes, bedrooms, bathrooms, and have them over here. As I reset the different modules, they'll stay that way indefinitely until I change them to something else. So it's very easy to kind of get it set up the way you want. And once you're used to it, it's very quick and easy to run in and blast through searches. If you look at those 10 and decide that's not what you're looking for, it's as simple as clicking the previous search to go right back to the previous 33 results and then maybe sec select a different set of criteria. Because it's so fast, it's very easy to jump in and out of different areas and run multiple searches. And mind you, as you're seeing these things pop up, this is real time in the live database over a wireless network that a lot of people are using. So it's still a very fast system. Now some of the other features, since I have a very limited time to show you this, uh, I'd like to show you some of the reporting that's also available within here. Uh, when we go down to the property level, it's simply just click on either the property name or the picture. And this is the detailed property report. When you're looking at an active listing, by default, it's always going to bring you to the listings tab, which is right here. If you're looking at a sold listing, recently sold, it'll automatically open up on the history tab because there's obviously not active listing information. And on that, that history tab, it will provide you all the history on that property. If there's been multiple listings in the past or other activity, it will provide you all the history on all the other listings and all the listing details. And then, of course, the very first button we have over here, whoops, hit the wrong button on my little toy. Let me go back into my property here. The very first button we have here is public data. And of course, that's pulling all the public record information. 
But one of the key areas that I wanted to show you under the public data section is over here. If you remember when I was running through the slideshow, I talked about the multiple AVMs, or those valuation models that are available out there. This is where it pulls in AVMs. This particular property, we have three different ones that we've, uh, we've gotten through our licensed providers. Sometimes you'll see up to five or six. So it just depends on how many happen to be available for that particular property. So on this one, it looks like, um, looks like things are kind of close. We've got a range of about 1.1 million all the way up to 1.2. So only 100,000 plus or minus swing. Sometimes you'll see that same 100 to $150,000 swing though on a property that's only valued at $150,000. So again, it's designed not to say here's what we think the property's worth, but to give you an idea of what your clients might be finding out there and they might find anything between that 150 and the $250,000 price. And chances are the only way you're really gonna know is to do either a good CMA or get an appraiser. So that's a another tool just to kind of help you deal with all the stuff that they're coming to you with after they've done six months worth of research on the internet and plop down this wonderful pile of paperwork on your desk and say, what do you think? So that's that basic information. Going across the tabs, again, you have the historical information on the history tab. This particular one has got a couple of listing numbers here. Um, looks like it was withdrawn and then it's gone back active again. And again, you can click on the plus over here to the right and pull up the listing details from each of the previous listings. It also gives you valuation and tax history. And at the bottom, it's also going to provide some additional information on taxes paid. And if there's been price changes, a lot of, a lot of times you'll have a graph down there that'll show price change history as well. Next tab over is the photo archive. Any photos that have been attached to this particular listing, we get all of them from the MLS. So I know uh, a lot of times the question will pop up while well, I'm, I know this is all part of realtor.com. I'm not paying for enhanced listings, so I know only four photos of mine will show up on, on realtor.com to the consumer. What shows up in here to other agents? Well, because we get the full RETS feed from the MLS, all the photos are available to other agents in the agent side. So you may only have four showing to the general public, but all of your photos will be available on the back end for the agents to see. And that's up to 25 photos. The other thing to remember is we do keep an active history of the photos. So if down the road, the MLS decides not to keep the archive of previ previous listings or previous photos, you'll be able to come in to find and see any previous listing photos that have been attached because we do maintain the history. Next tab over is community info. This is probably the best tab and I've gotten probably the best response for most agents because of the information that's available here. It's fantastic again. This kind of ties into the previous speaker for those of you that were here for her. Uh, if you have people that are coming in from other countries or even elsewhere within the state or elsewhere in the country, this is a great way to be able to provide them data on what's happening within this market. Uh, gives a quick snapshot. The community reports are designed to be community based on zip code. So that's as far down. So anytime you see community, whether you're looking here in New York or in Portland, it's gonna be down to the zip code level. That's the only way we could kind of make it the same for everybody so it kind of made sense. But you can see it pulls basic information, average household income, age groups, uh, this is a quick snapshot. It can be easily turned into a PDF. We also have the ability to compare though. So if I go into the compare section, it starts giving me a lot more detail, top occupations, uh, median household income, top employment industries, things of that nature. But I also have the ability to add additional zip codes up here under the compare section. Now I don't have to, I can just simply click on the PDF. It'll automatically space everything out and take that compare column out of there so the client won't feel like there's something missing. So if you just want to generate the community information, you've got at this point the zip code compared to the city, or excuse me, to the, um, the uh, state and the entire US. But let's say they happen to be relocating from Scottsdale, Arizona. You can type that in and it'll automatically populate all that data from Scottsdale. So they can easily see side by side the area they're moving into. They're jumping from an average list price of 296 to 1 million. Nice jump. Now in addition to this page, over on the details page, this is probably the best one. It is um, a highly detailed report that's generated. It puts all your branding at the top of it. Again, it's something that can be PDF'd or printed or emailed. And it does generate a report, so it takes a couple seconds. Hopefully it'll get here quickly. But this inf the information that's gonna be contained on this report is gonna be highly detailed. This is where it pulls in all that data. Uh, the, the average commute time for those communities will be in here. Average precipitation, employment by occupation, uh, 
weather, economic indicators, you name it. That's what this report is designed for. And so I can compare the two communities side by side, or if I had not put that second zip code in there, then it would just rearrange all the information, just provide the detail, because maybe you don't want to show the two communities side by side. That's entirely your option. But you can go through here, and it, it provides graphs and charts, lots of pretty stuff to look at. It's a very nice reporting system. Um, I'm going to skip past it for right now, just so you can go play with that on your own. But that's the uh, detail report available when you pull up the property report and it's community info. The last section in here is just a simple little tab, it's called comments, and that allows you just to put in some basic comments for yourself. You're the only one that'll see them, it's a private comment area, so if there's just some notes you wanted to attach to that particular property, you can do that. And so that's the property detail section. Now in addition to that, as you create these searches, you can save them, that's the little box, we have these little tabs that show up down the right hand side. While you're going through and searching different properties, there's a history tab. If you pull that out, it keeps track within the session of which properties you've gone in and out of. So if you get two or three searches down the road and you can't remember where you're at, you can go back into there. Those are the properties that you actually pull up the property detail report for. As you save the searches that you create, those show up in a search bin right here. You can have as many searches as you want, so you can just keep creating them over and over again. We also do hot feeds, which are very similar to your daily hot sheets that are in, uh, within your MLS. So if you create a particular search, in addition to obviously creating searches for clients, you can create specific searches for yourself. So if there's an area that you commonly farm, you can either draw an outline or use the text search to uh, create that search, save it, and then save it as a hot feed. Every time you open the hot feed box, it's gonna tell you within the criteria for that search how many things have changed since the last time you ran that hot feed. So basically timestamps it. Uh, I created this Woodbury one this morning. Two things have changed since I set that up. I did some training yesterday. We ran a, a hot feed for West Babylon. 10 changes have happened within there in the last 24 hours. <coughs> Excuse me. If I click on it, you'll see it automatically pulls up. Those listings that have changed, it resets all my search criteria at the top and it also resets the timestamp back to zero. You also have the ability to create and save reports. That's the reporting area right here. And last but not least, if my voice holds out the last five minutes, <clears throat> we have information that shows up in the mapping area. However many properties you have showing up on the actual uh, results page, it's gonna show those pins here on the map. If you've got more than 20, the page by default shows you 20 total properties. It'll display those uh, listings there on the map. If there's too many properties in one location for you to see, you'll see a little plus. If we click right on that, it's actually, will give a pop-up of the property, and it, it's probably difficult to see out there, but at the very bottom, this tells me that the property I'm looking at is one of two, and there's a little next button that I can kind of slide through those properties so I can display them right there on the map. If I had more results than I have room for on the page, again, I mentioned the default is 20 per page, but you can go down to the bottom of the page and reset that up to 100 results. However many results display here, you get the exact same results on the map. They're always coordinated back and forth between the page and the map. That's why you also have a button, if there are more than 20, you can click on the map that says next 20. It'll update the pins on the map as well as the page behind it. So they always stay coordinated. Now on the map, you may notice that we have kind of a cloudy looking thing off to the left there. That happens to be one of the features of the mapping. It's called a tile and it's showing flight paths. So if you have clients that want to know whether or not the house they're interested in are going to be in the flight paths of the airport, there you go. <laughs> if you want to get rid of that, <laughs> under the tiles section right here, we have a checkbox that's checked for flight paths. If I uncheck that box, it disappears. So you can turn it on, turn it off. There's also one for hazards, so if you want to see where tornadoes have touched down or uh, hurricanes have passed through, all that information's in there. It doesn't do flood zones. We haven't gotten set up with, uh, with FEMA yet. We're kind of working on that one. Uh, there's also a setting in here for amenities. So you can turn on hospitals, police stations, churches, you name it. They're all in there. And once they show up, the other nice thing is, let's say I turn the hospitals on. You'll see them pop up on the map. If you hover your mouse over it, it'll give you a pop-up letting you know what the facility is, the address, and the phone number. So it's another quick and easy way to find things. It also has the uh, bars, cafes, and restaurants for Friday night, and of course, all the churches for Sunday morning. Use those as you see fit. 
In addition to those layers, you also have the ability to uh, define or turn on or turn off neighborhoods. So if I click the neighborhoods button, let me check my time here, okay. If I turn on the neighborhoods button, you'll notice it automatically populates the map with all the known neighborhoods. This information does come to us from the county and the state, so we don't guarantee that it's going to necessarily always coincide with where you think those neighborhoods should be. Um, but if you want to check them out, all you have to do is click on the label, and it will automatically highlight the boundaries of each neighborhood. And then from there, you have a little drop-down section here. You can choose to save that particular neighborhood, use it in your search, or the last option is find schools. It will pop up the little school icons and let you know the schools in that area. Once you do that, you also have access to the school reports. Those can also be turned into a PDF, emailed, printed off, do whatever you like. In addition to the individual neighborhoods, there's a section called My Neighborhoods. And within those user guides, it'll tell you how to go in and draw your own neighborhoods, name them whatever you want, and you'll have the same ability to use them, save them, rename them, and find the schools. Last but not least, we also have access to <clears throat> excuse me, the unified school districts. So I can also turn those on, click on them and find out the school boundaries, or excuse me, the district boundaries. And then I have the same option to find schools within that district. I can also click on the district report. So you have direct access to a lot of reporting without having to go anywhere else. So that's kind of a quick tour around Find with all the goodies that it has in there. Remember, it's absolutely free. It is a member benefit of being a member of MLS LI. Uh, if you have any other questions, we're going to be out by the Realtor.com booth there for a little while, so I'll be happy to answer those. Otherwise, contact the MLS and jump in there and start playing. It's already there, ready to turn on and go play with. So thank you for your attention. You guys have a great afternoon. Enjoy your day.